there folks uh welcome to fantasy photo montage a youtube class presented by studio 300 at fountaindale um i'm monica and as part of the fountaindale public library i'll be taking you through this class on some basics on how to do different photo montage techniques uh if you've never done photo montage before you might be wondering what it is it's just a fancy word for describing taking two or more photos and piecing them together into a new composition. If we look at the Wikipedia page for photo montage, they give us some examples of really simple ones like this kiwi inside of a lemon that somebody has made. Um, but photo montage actually predates computers. It's not a strictly digital medium. Folks have been making them even with uh, film and analog techniques uh, for quite a while now. One of my favorite artists that I learned about, Jerry Ullman, actually was uh, a sort of master of this technique uh, back in a time where it, everyone still used film and darkroom techniques to make these. Uh, so here are some cool examples. So photo montage uh, can be kind of similar to collage in a lot of ways, but one of the things that makes it stand out is sort of putting photos together in a way that looks a little bit seamless and creates this sort of surreal, fantastic quality. So we're going to be making something similar using Photoshop today. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get some photos for your photo montage. The best thing to do is to take your own photos using your phone or a camera if you um, are coming to the studio to take photos that is a great place to do it it also gives you the most control and you can light your images so that they all sort of fit together and you don't have to do as much editing um, but if you don't have time or you need a photo of something that doesn't exist like a fantasy creature or a dragon or a spaceship or something that you're not easily going to be able to photograph stock images are another really good way to go um, if you have a Fountaindale library card, you have access to story blocks online through the studio. That is a really good place to get images and the website looks like this. There are also plenty of really handy and reliable um, stock image sites like Unsplash or Pexels, which is what I'm going to be using for most of the project today. Another really cool uh, place to go is nasa.gov especially if you're doing sci-fi themed images or fantasy themed images because uh, nasa creates galleries and um, allows the public to access its photos for free so if you wanted to get some really cool pictures of say like a satellite you can go to multimedia images scroll down a little bit and under image of the day hit browse image archive and you can scroll through all these really neat uh, photos that NASA has put out there. Some of them are photos of like launches, um, but some are artist renditions like this one, drawings of concepts that they were working on in the past. Uh, so there are some really neat resources in here. Back to Pexels though. The reason I like using Pexels is because they have a really uh, wide variety of photos to use. Um, I want to sort of incorporate a dragon into this project, so if I type in dragon, there are some really neat user submitted photos uh, that I can pick from. This one looks kind of interesting, so I'm going to go ahead and hit download, and it'll prompt you to save it to your computer. I'm just going to type in dragon and hit save. The next important step, once you have all your photos, you've downloaded them from a stock website, or you've gotten the photos you've taken together, you want to be able to view them all in the same place. I use uh, Pexels to start out with, uh, especially if I'm using stock images. One of the features it has that I like is you can save photos to a collection. So you can hit your collections 
I'll go down to the place where I have saved the photos for this project. And these were just some ideas, um, photos that I liked that I wanted to incorporate into the project, but I hadn't totally narrowed down yet. Uh, but it's a good way to look at all of your assets in one place to see if uh, they will work for your composition. You can use any kind of free program for this. You can use Pinterest boards, you can use Tumblr. There is also a really neat uh, free program called PureRef that you can use not just for photo montage, but digital painting as well. If you type in PureRef into a browser, this is what it kind of looks like. It is a program you can download on your computer and it's just really flexible. You can lay it on top of whatever software you're working on so that all your reference photos are in one place and you can move them around and zoom in and out of them really easily uh, while you're working. So that makes things a whole lot easier for me um, and I highly recommend it. But even if you don't use any of those things, uh, having a saved collection like this is just fine but I've already downloaded a lot of my files. I have them on my desktop, in my project folder, and I have all of my assets downloaded here. I'm actually going to be using a program called Adobe Bridge. It is part of Adobe's uh, suite of software, and it is a browser program. It's a little old now, but what makes it really good for this project is I can not just see all of my uh, assets in one place if I open it up. I can navigate to the desktop, to my folder, and see all of them here. Uh, this just works really fluidly with Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, it not just only lets you see everything in one place, but you can make edits in it before you ever open up a file in Photoshop. So if I want to do that, I can right click on an image and hit open in camera raw. And this gives you some basic uh, tools to start uh, messing with exposure. Um, I'm going to use it to change the color of some of these things before I bring them into Photoshop. Like, I like this sun, but I want to give it more of a fantasy feel, so I'm going to be changing it into some really wild color, like more of a pink or a red. So I kind of like how that's looking right here. Adobe Bridge also gives you the option to open it as a copy, which will open it up in Photoshop, or open as a smart object, which we will be talking more about smart objects a little later in the video. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and open this in Photoshop. And then I have this here ready to go uh, for my big canvas once we create that. All right, so once you have made your initial edits in Camera Raw in Adobe Bridge, now it's time for us to actually open up Photoshop and create a new canvas. You can do that by hitting Photoshop. Mine's already open, but usually when you open it up, you'll see a screen like this. We are going to create a new print um, project, and I'm going to actually, or actually a new art and illustration project going to be making a poster that's 18 by 24 um, and we're going to make it landscape. The 300 pixels per inch is good especially if you plan to print this out later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change the uh, the color profile to Adobe RGB 1998 and hit create. And then this gives me a blank canvas to work with and start out with. I'm going to be building up all of my pictures on top of this. So we are going to start with the sky. I'm going to go back to Adobe Bridge. This is the sky picture that I wanted to uh, start out with. I really like the colors and the sort of moon in the background. So we're just going to double click it 
it'll open up in Photoshop. And I'm going to be going over a couple different ways that you can make selections in Photoshop for this project. Selections is just a fancy way of saying uh, cutting out parts of pictures you want. Uh, since I want to use this whole sky, um, I'm going to hit Command A. That creates these marching ants around the entire picture. And from here I can copy it by hitting Command C. going to my canvas and hitting command V to paste. It'll just ask me this color question, but then it puts my image in the photo. Now, if I was to just take this image, hit command T to scale it up and down and make it bigger, there's a chance that I could zoom in really close. And then this picture would become more pixelated if I just try uh, enlarging it all on its own. We don't want to do that necessarily. We don't want to lose quality. This is a pretty large picture. I forgot to mention earlier that uh, any photos you use, you want them to be a pretty large resolution. Uh, usually anything over a thousand pixels is pretty good. Um, but uh, I don't want to damage any pictures while I'm working on them. Uh, so I want to not do as much damage as possible. So we're going to actually hit Command Z to undo those changes, and we're going to turn this picture into a smart object. Turning a picture into a smart object just means that it keeps its source data intact, so that when you are scaling them up and down, making them bigger, smaller, making edits to them, Photoshop is drawing on the original image. Um, so let me go ahead and right click on this layer actually gonna right click over on the side just on the layer and hit convert to smart object you'll know it worked because this little icon will be there um, and now we can scale our image up and down without worrying about it getting pixelated so I'm gonna move back out hit command T And scale this image up and it looks a little bit pixelated now because I have not hit entered or enter but once I hit uh, enter or return everything looks clear this moon still looks pretty sharp so I like the way that looks we're gonna keep this like this. Now we're going to start building up the background by creating um, uh, more of a uh, mid-ground uh, sort of area of the picture. I'm gonna bring in some more clouds. I'm gonna go back to bridge. And I really like the shape of uh, these clouds with this sort of reveal in the middle of it. So I'm going to try to select for that so you can see the sky behind this picture. Um, first thing we're going to do, double click this image. And I don't necessarily need this entire image. Um, you want to reduce pixels as much as possible so your file size remains manageable. Um, so I'm going to actually crop this image for just the part that I need. I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection, try to get as much of this uh, center out as possible. Going to go up to select. And this is another um, technique you can do is hit color range under the select menu. What color range will do is it will let you pick a specific color in the image and it'll make a selection based on just that color. Uh, so I've clicked on this one gray area. If I click in different places, you can see the selection changing and it's creating a mask over in this side of the uh, screen. So anything black will be something that you can see. It'll be the part of the photo that you can see. Um, anything white will be masked out and you will see the layer underneath it. 
So I'm going to actually click on this plus dropper tool to keep selecting colors and get that center area as much of a white space as possible. That looks pretty good to start out with. And then I'm gonna hit OK. And you can see that it has created these marching ants around um, a good chunk of the image. And I like most of the shape. I don't really want it to select for these areas though. Um, so I'm going to use another tool called the Quick Selection Tool. I'm going to hit this minus brush button to take away part of the selection. I'm hitting a bracket key to just make my brush a little bit larger. And I am deselecting this part of my selection because I really only want that center part there. Um, Oops, too far, Command Z to undo. But I pretty much like the way that that looks right here. So I'm going to go back to my move tool and I'm going to go to select and inverse. This is going to create a mask around the entire cloud, um, sort of foreground in this image. You can also click uh, shift command I. So now you can see that it is selected this whole area over here. And if I wanted to create a mask, you would simply go to uh, this quick mask button in the corner. And now this transparent checkerboard layer lets me know that anything I put underneath here, um, I'll be able to see a picture if I put it um, underneath this layer. So we're just going to copy this whole layer. Um, taking it, dragging it to the canvas. Hitting OK. We're also going to make this a smart object. And hit Command T to move it into place and scale it up. All right, that's already looking pretty good. So I like the way that this has turned out quite a lot so far. Right now I'm just placing things, but I think that does it for the background. Um, I might add one more layer just to give it some texture back here, uh, cause I wanted this to still sort of look like space. So we're going to open up this last image, this galaxy image, and play with some blending modes. So if I double click this, hit Command A, Command C for copy, once again, going to turn it into a smart object. hit Command T. This only needs to cover anywhere there you can see the pink part of the sky. And I'm going to move it underneath the foreground cloud layer um, so I can see this really spacey texture. But I want to see that moon through it. So we're actually going to lower the opacity quite a bit. Just so we get this sense of this kind of galaxy texture. And you can also change the blending modes for different effects over in this menu. Um, I 
I actually really like this kind of hard light effect. So we are going to leave it like that. And now I have a background that I can start putting subjects in. So now that I've got my sky looking the way I want pretty much, I'm gonna go back to this picture of the sun that we edited a little bit earlier, this pink sun, and I'm going to create a mask using color range the same way we did with the other one. I'm gonna go up to select, color range, use the eyedropper to select as much of this pink sun as I can. until I make a totally white mask in the center there, or at least as much as I'm able to. And that's looking pretty good to me, so we're gonna hit OK. Going to hit Shift-Command-I to invert my selection. Hit Quick Mask. Actually, that's not what I wanted. I'm gonna hit undo. We're actually going to hit shift command I again, because I wanted that original selection. Then I'm gonna hit quick mask. And here is our sun. I'm going to drag that over. A smart object. And we are going to scale this down and maybe put it over here someplace. And I don't necessarily want the sun all the way up in the foreground, so to make it look like it's a little bit further away, we are going to actually move it to the back. And play with the blending modes just a little bit to see if we can get a really cool effect. I like what the screen effect is doing there. It also makes this sun a lot lighter and a little bit fuzzy, um, which can mimic an effect of what we call atmospheric perspective. That is when something is so far away from you that it looks fuzzy, um, and that's what helps your eye think that it's far away. So I like the way that's looking for the sun. I also saved a picture of a moon, at least I thought I did. Well. I guess we'll use this little satellite instead because I actually really like it. Um, we are gonna go ahead, crop this down. This is another cool thing about using space photos is you have most of the time really nice black backgrounds that you can pull from. Going to zoom in here just so we're able to see Select, color range. Select everything that's black in the background here. Hit OK. I don't want it to select this stuff in the center. So I'm actually going to go back up to the quick selection brush that we used earlier. Same as before, I'm going to use the minus selection brush. Get rid of this center selection. All right. 
right and hit mask. Oops, forgot to inverse. So shift command I and mask. Smart object once again. That is another good example of something really pixelated um, kind of small still being able to be blown up in this larger document size so we're going to go ahead and move him over here i really like how that's looking so far so i've got my sun i've got my spaceship because it's not so fuzzy it looks like it's popping out at us a little bit more um so now all that's left to do is add some more fantasy type elements so i'm gonna go back and I saved this photo of a ship, I believe. That I thought was pretty cool looking. And especially with something like this, it can be hard to select um, for these really thin lines up at the top but we're just going to go ahead and keep using the techniques that we've been using um, this is a really good example of what color range is a good tool for is these thin sort of detailed lines um, that we still want in our picture but would be really difficult to select by hand but i'm also going to show you a couple other tools so first we're going to crop this down because we don't need the entire picture we just want the ship actually going to make an initial pretty rough selection using the polygonal lasso tool polygonal lasso tool is just real nice for creating a rough selection like this going around something because we want to cut out as many um, extra pixels as possible it just makes editing easier in the long run I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter or return and then we have our selection and then hit command C to copy it and go over to our canvas hit command V to paste and we're in the same uh, sort of area that we were before we're going to turn this into a smart object so we can blow it up. And scale this up. But now that we're working on this layer, I um, still want to use a pen tool to cut out this bottom part of the hull um, of the ship. So we are going to go ahead and select this pen tool, zoom in as much as we can, and the pen tool is pretty simple to use. You can make straight line selections by clicking and just clicking again but what it's really good for is making curved selections where if i click and drag you can see that uh, this anchor point tool is curving the line um, so i'm just going to do that for the more curved parts of the ship especially the bottom area right here
especially comes in handy for this sort of back curved area. And then for these sort of mast and rigging lines, we are just going to create a rough selection again. And just get as much of the sky out as possible. So from here, we have a pen tool path that we've just made, but it's not a selection yet. So that we are going to do by actually clicking on this make selection button. And we're going to feather it with one pixel that just creates a softer selection, it makes our edges a little softer. So now we have our selection. So now what we'll do is I want to continue adding to this selection, but first I'm going to turn off all these under layers so that all we have is the picture of our ship. So once we have turned off all the under layers, I'm going to hit the quick mask button again. And we've masked off the bottom, but we still need to mask out this top part of the ship. So what we'll do now is make sure that the mask part of the um, layer is selected. You can tell by these little white bracket corners that are around this side of the, uh, the box. And then we are going to go up to select color range. And we are just selecting any area of the sky here. just making that back area as white as possible. All right, the one step I forgot to show before I clicked OK that last time was to hit invert because um, I actually want this black area masked off. And you can see in the picture that now that sky um, is selected. So if I hit OK, we've got our ship and our mast lines um, and rigging lines, uh, but no sky. And this is a pretty good, pretty clean selection, um, as much as we can hope for. So now I can zoom back out, turn these layers back on, and put this ship wherever I need, have this sort of cool, fantastic flying ship. All right. So that's really coming along. The last element I wanted to add in here was a dragon um, to have something for the ship to fight. So we are going to go back to bridge and open up this image of a dragon um, statue that I thought looked really cool, but also because it's made of metal, I thought it would make a really neat looking kind of space dragon. So we are going to use the pen tool to create the initial selection. I especially want to use it for this area down here near the dragon's belly so that I can get a neat kind of curving shape. Everything else, it's pretty okay if we just make some general selections. And 
there is my closed path. I am just going to make that a selection, feather it, and hit Command C to copy into my final project. Right, and similar to the ship photo, we are going to select that sky around the dragon and clear up those edges a little bit. All right, and invert is already checked. I'm gonna hit OK. There we go. Right, there's one more finishing touch I want to add, um, because what kind of dragon um, goes into battle without being able to breathe fire? So we're going to go back and look at some of these stock photos that I have. This one is of a blacksmith's forge that I thought looked really neat. This one is of a pyrotechnics show. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and open up these two photos see if we can use both of them. And really crop them down. And select for just the fire in the photograph. This, I think, would be a pretty cool flame for the side of the ship. That looks pretty neat as is, but I'm gonna see if blending it makes it a little bit better. color dodge looks pretty cool. And then we're going to go back and do the same thing with this pyrotechnics photo. These are going to be the flames that's shooting out of the dragon's mouth. this to be a bit smaller. And not only do I want to blend this into the background a little bit, but I actually want to change the color of these flames too. I'm gonna go to image, adjustments, black and white. And that might seem counterintuitive, but if you select black and white, you can go into um, this tint checkbox and actually change the color of your object, make it more or less saturated. I like the idea of these like pink purple flames. So that is just a really neat um, effect you can mess with. Hit OK. And now we can go back and look at some of these layer blending modes. 
I'm going to leave it on... Let's do pin light. So that pretty much covers everything I wanted to show you in this class. Um, just some tips for finding uh, resources for photo montage and how you can uh, use Photoshop to select uh, different objects and make different kinds of selections so you can eventually put it all into one composite image. Um, there's definitely more steps that you can take. You can get really into blending these layers together. Um, if you would like to learn more about that, there's plenty of YouTube videos. Definitely look up things on like how to use masks or how to use adjustment layers to sort of blend pictures together. Um, pretty much if you look up photo montage in YouTube, you'll find a ton of different techniques. But that pretty much does it for uh, this class here today. I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, we'll see you again soon.